An exclamation of surprise broke from the lips of Deerslayer. An exclamation that was low and guardedly made, however, for his habits were much more thoughtful and regulated than those of his reckless companion. When on reaching the margin of the lake, he beheld the view that unexpectedly met his gaze. It was, in truth, sufficiently striking to merit a brief description. On a level with the point lay a broad sheet of water, so placid and limpid that it resembled a bed of the pure mountain atmosphere, compressed into a setting of hills and woods. Its length was about three leagues, while its breadth was irregular, expanding to half a league or even more opposite to the point, and contracting to less than half that distance more to the southward. Of course, its margin was irregular, being indented by bays and broken by many projecting low points. At its northern or nearest end, it was bounded by an isolated mountain, lower land falling off east and west, gracefully relieving the sweep of the outline. Still the character of the country was mountainous, high hills or low mountains, rising abruptly from the water on quite nine-tenths of its circuit. The exceptions indeed only served a little to vary the scene, and even beyond the parts of the shore that were comparatively low, the background was high, though more distant. But the most striking peculiarities of this scene were its solemn solitude and sweet repose. On all sides, wherever the eye turned, nothing met it but the mirror-like surface of the lake, the placid void of heaven, and the dense setting of wood. So rich and fleecy were the outlines of the forest that scarce an opening could be seen. The whole visible earth, from the rounded mountain top to the water's edge, presenting one unvaried hue of unbroken verdure. As if vegetation were not satisfied with a triumph so complete, the trees overhung the lake itself shooting out towards the light, and there were miles along its eastern shore where a boat might have pulled beneath the branches of dark Rembrandt-looking hemlocks, quivering aspens, and melancholy pines. In a word, the hand of man had never yet defaced or deformed any part of this native scene which lay bathed in the sunlight, a glorious picture of affluent forest grandeur, softened by the balminess of June and relieved by the beautiful variety afforded by the presence of so broad an expanse of water. This is grand. Tis solemn. Tis an education of itself to look upon, exclaimed Deerslayer, as he stood leaning on his rifle and gazing to the right and left, north and south, above and beneath, in whichever direction his eye could wander. Not a tree disturbed, even by redskin hand as I can discover, but everything left in the ordering of the Lord to live and die according to his own designs and laws.